So this is a podcast about Mental Health Awareness Week, which is the 13th to the 19th of May. And we have four guest speakers with us today, including myself. Hello, my name's Emma Castledine and I'm CEO of Worthing Counselling Centre. And we offer counselling to anyone in the Worthing and Ada areas, age 16 upwards. I'm Annie Foot. I'm Head of Community Mental Health and Development for West Sussex Mind. And we provide mental health support um, across Ada and Worthing and further afield. And I'm Violet Jessica. I work as a group fitness manager for South Anselet Trust. And I manage classes, gyms, PTs, etc. for all and outreach. I mean, do you like to tell us a bit about Mental Health Awareness Week? Yeah, sure. So Mental Health Awareness Week, um, as you said, Corinne, is from the 13th to the 19th of May. Um, and it puts uh, it's an annual campaign that puts a spotlight on mental health um, to raise awareness um, of mental health and ha- hopefully help to reduce stigma around it. Um, this year's theme is movement. Um, so we, I think we're definitely going to be talking about how exercise um, can help mental health. Um, and at West Sussex Mind, we um, always have a theme of wear it blue, which is our colours um, and um, is a great way to show your support for the campaign. Um, so a little bit about West Sussex Mind, we've been providing mental health support um, across um, West Sussex for over 50 years um, and we have different offerings across the county um, and our services go through from providing support to parents of under five-year-olds all the way through our children and young people services which cover eight to 17 and 16 to 25. Um, We then have a full adult offering and finally our Communities in Mind program which supports over 65s um, in Ada, Aaron and Chichester. Um, And as well as our sort of frontline mental health support, we've got our um, social activities. So that's a really great way where those who are receiving support from us can Um, start to take on some social activities that might help with their recovery, um, which does also include exercise. So we've got things like run groups, walks, um, table tennis, badminton, things like that. Um, We know that exercise and movement is really key for helping with our mental health. Lots of us will get a buzz out of doing it, it will improve our mood, make us feel better, we'll sleep better. But actually, if you're at the point where you're struggling with your mental health, it can be really hard to take that step. So those activities are a really nice transition. And then people might feel that they're then able to go to things like classes here at Samson's Leisure, join things like park run in the community. Um, so we provide um, a lot of activities across the area. So I'm actually going to talk a little bit about Worthing in Central. Yeah, they do. absolutely. And I think well, I mean, with all of you, yeah. know, which is brilliant. So we offer employee assistance programme for counselling. So we offer therapy to employees of South Downs Leisure. And that's, we've been doing that now for a good couple good of years. Year, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And... It's really great to actually meet face-to-face with people in the community and help with their mental health. We're also working with Mind Again. I think we're two years in. Of, we had lottery funding, which was absolutely brilliant, to work with 16 to 25-year-old young people. And this year, we're concentrating on young people who are neurodivergent. So again, we're linking with all of our partners uh, and, and looking at mental health as a whole, as a community. And, you know, we also offer, and we did a pilot which went really well, which is walk and talk, which Mm. actually links very much with movement. So it can be really difficult for people to sit in a room and not move and and be able to access difficult emotions and difficult ways of being. So so that is something that we want to develop. And we've offered that with South Dars Leisure because obviously a lot of your employees Mm. are Mm. physical beings. Exercise is, is actually why they were brought into this industry so so we'd like to be as um, responsive as we can to that and the importance of movement uh, and mental health absolutely definitely we want to talk a little bit about that pilot absolutely um oh uh, we work with mind as well as we having counseling center for years uh we delivered in the past uh yoga classes for mind uh, for years and um, what I would like to say just listening uh, to you ladies is that obviously I think the first perception of what Leisure Centre provides is just classes, gym, yeah. swimming but it's, I would like to mention it's much more than that 
uh, because so we've got, for instance, a um, 12 week scheme called um, Exercise Referral, where people with different medical conditions can come and join this scheme where they get extra care. Uh, from our access referral consultants. And I must say we see a um, very progressive increased percentage of people with mental health issues and actually prescribe access referral scheme for mental health issues. I don't start basics. Everyone knows that physical activity is good for you. You want to know me about obviously the birth of dopamine and oxytocin and other hormones and and obviously, when we move, we feel better. When we feel better, we feel better with life, with the external world. Um, but also, you know, movement doesn't have to be what we might envisage as exercise. It could also be things like gardening. So we just were really excited that local to, to here, actually in Durrington, we've just um, been given the opportunity to take on a community allotment. Um, which is just a great way to, A, you know, there's varying degrees of movement with gardening. We know it can be actually quite physical, but it's it's the connection. It's being outside, I think, is incredibly important. Um, nurturing things. Um, I know, Emma, you've got, you've, you're a real proponent of the Five Ways to Wellbeing, which is the Minds Initiative, and that obviously is, well, it's very linked I mean, to it's it. been around a long time, it's Five Ways to Wellbeing. I used to teach it in the Recovery College in Nottingham many, many years ago for um, Peter and Sick services and it was really it was probably the first time really that we really started talking about linking it all together and this is why i like that we're all in partnership together mm. because we have stopped going this is your physical health this is your mental health this is your workplace this is your your home life and we're actually joining it together and and to hear you speak about you know, it's about well-being. There are so many different things. I've used the exercise referral myself because I have a physical health condition and it was amazing. I would never have stepped foot mm. in a gym mm. or in a leisure centre um, because I didn't feel that it was it worked for me. Mm. And it was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. So for us to be able to work with you all actually just fits with ways of well-being whether there are five or more but this is quite useful i just picked this up today i haven't looked at it for a long time this is a this is a handout from about 2000 and something um but but actually thinking about being a counseling center and that, and that seems very niche it seems like that's what we do but actually we don't just deal or work with the person in the room we're talking about their whole being and so you know connecting connecting through movement connecting to your body connecting to your emotions connecting to other people you know being active that's one of the five ways to well-being absolutely taking notice again you know you were talking about uh, the allotment yeah. and, and and noticing things hearing things around you so it, again it's the mindfulness isn't it the senses meditation so i think what's brilliant is we're all sat around the table we're all wanting this and and that's what we are doing as part of our work so i think you need to do more of that, more of that connecting. Um, and and that will help promote everybody's mental health. Definitely. And also, I think in the workplace, um, we try and encourage staff to take at least half an hour break. Um, there's a lot of staff that day, um, but it, the opportunity is there. I think that's so important, even if it's just walking away from your desk, you know, and just going outside um, and just, just get a little bit intense just even if you just say I'm just going out for a walk I try and encourage managers to ensure that their staff you know do take that half an hour minimum break at least especially if they work six hours you know there are a lot of work cultures where you are you are expected to get in early you are expected to work over lunch and so we, we've kind of built this culture and self-care being a separate thing and almost it's a little bit, you know, you're being a little bit self-indulgent because you're asking for a break. Mm -hmm. And so actually having employees that go, no, no, but we want you to, yeah. can actually be very freeing for people. Mm -hmm. And and we find in, in, in counselling, you know, things like offering the five senses meditation for people, saying to people, you can go to the exercise referral. Mm -hmm. Mine do do workshops. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's really important that we, mm -hmm. we know what's out there yeah. and and let people know that it's okay to do it. Yeah, and I think it's really important as 
you know, those of us who are, are leading teams that we lead by example. Yeah. Um, and I've certainly felt over the years as I've sort of been progressing in, in a working uh, life that, oh, well, I must stay late. Um, you know, the impression of, oh, well, you, you're the one that needs some time. Well, actually, um, you know, A, there's a lot of research that working longer hours doesn't actually make you more responsible. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you'll often be tired the next day, you struggle to switch off yeah. from work. But I think it is really important that we sort of say, actually, we as a society, there's this thing of we've always got to be on, we've always got to be working. Mm. Actually, that's not good for our mental health, it's mm. not good for our physical health. Mm. When you start building those things back in, actually, you'll probably find that you're more productive at work because you feel better, you've got more mm. energy mm. sitting all day. Um, a real proponent um which can uh, drive i think some of my colleagues fast <laughs> but of a, the move more sit less movement so yeah. the idea that it doesn't actually matter if you go to the gym before or after work and do a really good workout if you then sit all day mm. in cardiovascular wise is not good for us mm. so we should be getting up and moving so every hour even if it's just going to the loo making yourself a cup of tea going to a kitchen downstairs or a water cooler downstairs mm. rather than one just like that mm. Um, we've just recently, well, in fact, yesterday we were having a conversation. We've made a, a decision as an organization that if we have a two hour meeting, there will be a break, um, after the first hour, just so we can move. Um, because also if you have lots of meetings, again, the pandemic, we've all moved to using things like Zoom and Teams, mm. fantastic for connecting in lots of ways, mm. but we can over schedule ourselves. Mm. So it's just bringing stuff like that back in. Um, I think that really picks up around accessibility and yeah. barriers mm. yeah. to movement. And I think if people are really struggling with their mental health, it's a really big ask to then do some exercise. It's a really big ask mm. to say, come out of your house, go somewhere new. Wear different plates, mm. be committed to something, leave all that behind. So actually having different options that people can dip into and maybe move forward slowly. Because often if the demand is too high, mm. then you can't begin. You can, mm. People cannot. And it's not because they don't want to. And it's not a choice. And I think this is the other thing we need to be really mindful of is that people don't generally choose to do things that are bad for them. They it's because they're unable to. So, so being able to have different options and different organisations that you can dip into, for me, is the way forward. That's really um, And I think it's that connection as well. I did some work in, across Adrian Worthing last year about, you know, what maybe are some of the barriers to people exercising. And I think there is, particularly amongst women, um, a feeling of going, you know, what, what it was like at school where you had to do sex sports um, I certainly now the things that I do are not things that I did at school, but they're things that I've discovered over the years and that I really enjoy. And what I enjoy might be very different to what you enjoy, Violet. There isn't, you know, sometimes people say, oh, you must do CrossFit or you must do running, you must do hit. You, you must you, you must just do what you enjoy doing. Oh, really? For some people that will actually just be walking everywhere oh. or maybe getting on a bike. Um, there's lots of things that we can do. Uh, just the key is to try and get started. Yeah. And there are actually lots of things out there, whether it's SAS and Leisure or other community organisations out there that will help you. So just reach out if you want some help to get into to moving more. Absolutely. I mean, with our offer, our very, you know, certain that you can choose whatever you want. Because we offer almost 400 classes per week. Mm -hmm. So all the in the water or on land, not in... Yeah, with a while on acting on it. But yeah, you name it. It might be something for some people uh, so exotic, uh, like pole fitness or Lyra, which I think mm -hmm. was in my career, fitness career, the most successful program we ever launched. Uh, because stories from ladies, you know, feedback from ladies. But it's not just for ladies, it was just incredible. He said, you know, I gained my confidence. Feeling empowered, yeah. feel strong. Absolutely. Yeah. Feminine again. And it's not about having perfect, you know, size zero. It's about getting the confidence. Same time as it's, you know, it, it's just finding the right instructor, finding the right group of people. Um, and I think the great thing is once you do discover what you what you love, the the benefits, your mental health, your physical health, your social life as well, mm -hmm. is. It, really not to be underestimated sure. and i think some of the things that people find helpful are knowing what the task looks like so having little videos yeah. 
yeah. but the actual class, not not some random class, but the actual mm-hmm. class where it is, where the room is, that's really helpful, mm-hmm. especially for um, those of us who are neurodivergent, because you've, you've that, got that barrier of, of that mm-hmm. change and transition. But also, I think there's a real promotion. You don't have to do this on your own. Get a wing person to go mm, with you. Yeah. You know, get someone that definitely. that will come. And even even if you they say, I'll come for the first three sessions till you mm. know people. Mm. So this isn't, because often it's almost like you've got to do it yourself. It's all kind mm. of, you know, mm. be strong, go. And, mm. and that's not helpful for a lot of people. Mm. And I think it's also really important with all of our services to be representative. Yeah, and I think, you know, we've, across the world, there's obviously... You know, marketing is, like you say, is, is sort of people particularly, I think, aimed at women. But, you know, exercise should be about becoming smaller in your body and things like that. And I think we're also aware with um, the services that we provide that we want to represent the people that we are helping. Yeah. And I think if you see people that you can identify with mm. um, for whatever reason that you identify with them, that, again, it just makes you think, actually, I could belong there. Yeah. I will feel safe there. It's so important to feel safe, both obviously physically, but mentally as well, because mm-hmm. um, it is these are big things. And as we sort of chatted about, it's big things anyway. Yeah. But if you're struggling with your confidence, with your mental health, if you're mm-hmm. suffering with things like depression and anxiety, I mean, it's just it can feel like a mountain. But it's just taking that little step each time mm-hmm. we see uh, increasing popularity of our classes, especially uh, mind and body classes like mm-hmm. mindfulness, meditation, um, yoga, Pilates, where people actually can walk for this slow and paced class. So they can have a space for their mind and body where they can slow down, they can just be rather than switching from task to task. So it's really good to see. I don't know, and that is connection, isn't it? That sound is connection, holistic connection mm. rather than just the physical connection yeah. and i think that's what that that mix enables Absolutely. people to do um, mm. and it's so important and i think the other thing is to really be mindful of individuals and work with individuals mm. so so what do you need to be able to move more what do you need mm. for your mental health mm. that works for singing yeah. for some people mm. and that is physical and it is right. Yeah, I mean, it's so breath work, yeah, yeah, it's, it with a purpose. So yeah. you know, it, it's fantastic. Mm. So it doesn't have to be sport orientated. Yeah. Although, if you were into sport, brilliant. Um, but yeah, we need to to carry on being imaginative around movement, yeah. and and people will then connect mm. with that. So it's finding the thing that sparks enough interest so that you can then like, oh, yes. do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think the only thing just to, to touch on it is um. You know, a bit like the names with South Downs. You know, yes. we are in an amazing position mm-hmm. here. We're so fortunate. We've got yeah. the dams um, and the, and other you know green yeah. spaces, mm-hmm. and we've got the sea. And there's some fantastic groups that are actually more just about getting in the sea, having a yeah. mindful experience. It's not about um, being looking like an Olympic swimmer and swimming as fast as possible. It's actually just about getting really comfortable mm-hmm. in your body, yeah. feeling confident. In a swimsuit, I think lots of us struggle with that, but yeah. actually you're doing it. Um, and breath work, just the feeling, being mindful of that water, which sometimes, let's face it, is quite cold um, on you. And yes. I think, so, you know, there's so much you can do that's hugely beneficial. You know, we've seen all the research with Wim Hof and people like that. Um, that can have a huge effect on you physically and mentally. Yeah. Thinking about the the Wim Hof stuff and your people who are experiencing high levels of anxiety finding the ice bath really really helpful mm-hmm. and, and you know if we look because i think too technical we're, we're looking at the, our threat response and our flight and we need to move and mm-hmm. um, we're not moving and our bodies are wanting to run away or to fight and we're, we're we're stopping that and and that is having a really detrimental effect on people and their uh, responses are generally anxiety and depression. Mm-hmm. We see more and more of this mm-hmm. um, as people are living less and are feeling more stressed. Mm-hmm. And it's perceived risk as well, mm-hmm. um, which obviously is heightened when your mental health isn't okay for you. So, mm-hmm. so it's, it's so linked that we, mm-hmm. we do need to have all of these things mm-hmm. available for people, even mm-hmm. if it's just information we're giving. Yeah. That, when people come to Wording Counselling Centre, something quite significant has happened. Mm. 
So people are often in crisis, not always, but often in crisis. And, and I really want people to know that mental health is about health. It's not about when you are in crisis. Mm. So if you can do these things now, before you are feeling really, really bad, then that will be really helpful. We often push through. By me, any more, especially women, especially women who work in really high pressure jobs who say to me, I don't know what's the matter with me. I'm exhausted. I feel well, I haven't let my self-esteem's on the floor. I work really hard. I keep pushing through. I don't feel like I'm strong. I'm like, okay. <laughs> because actually you 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 haven't connected with self. You haven't been looking after your mental health and your physical health. And, and by the time you get to that point, you're really, really not okay. Actually, you need to look after ourselves. And I'm, you know, one of the worst. I'm not saying I'm, you know, I'm absolutely perfect with this self-care lot because I'm not, but I'm aware of it. And as you say, having people looking out to you going, mm, they're, they're really stressed at the moment or they're not eating or, but also saying to people, it's okay to go, I'm a bit wobbly and ask for help. You don't have to wait until you're in crisis before you use any of our services, actually. But I think the word mental health has that implication. It's our yeah. And it's interesting you saying that about women. Um, and and definitely, yeah. I'm not saying men don't too. So well, that was going to be yeah. where I am not saying men don't. No, but I mean, yeah, we're trying to do lots of work around breaking down stigma around mental health yeah. men because equally it's that feeling of I need to provide. Yes. You know, all the again, a societal construct yeah. that we would expect that um, I, I need to provide for my family yeah. or I own the majority of the money men shouldn't cry men you know should be tough all of this stuff and there's some fantastic initiatives around things like men in sheds yeah. um men will talk things like that um of actually one of the strongest things you can do is just actually you know what we're doing great right now um and it's fantastic when i see some male friends where they start talking about their mental health um I know that there's a local um, cycling group called Centuries um, run by a guy called Johnny in Worthing and he's putting on a, a bike ride on the Saturday the 18th of May um, for West Sussex Wind or to raise awareness of what we do. And Centuries is all about cycling and talking about your mental health. You're doing something a bit like you're saying with Walk Talk counselling. Yeah, yeah. You're doing Absolutely. something where you're not focused on talking. It's really, it can be really hard to open up sitting on a bike i've just come back from a lovely holiday where i was sitting on a bike have someone different next to me every day have a chat and you talk about all sorts of things you know you start with the pleasantries but you end up talking about all sorts of things but it takes the pressure off you're not sitting there going well then are they judging me by what i say you know if they think i'm a bit silly for thinking this um so yeah it's fantastic when sort of real grassroots initiatives like that is yeah. set up as and there's also research about being able to process and um, trauma and um, mm -hmm. movement um, as well. So again, it, you know, we're, we're we're just reinforcing how important movement and mental health is. I think. Definitely. I would like to mention how important this kind of awareness actions are, uh, like you know, mental health awareness week, because it just gives the permission to actually talk about it. Yeah, it does. The sex stigma and in the subject and talk yeah. back, but also of the person. So I would like to say what we get here at South Tastia and so important, mm -hmm. not just extra training as a manager, but also like fully able to use your services. And I know I signed many of my colleagues uh, and many of my colleagues actually recommended to me sure. to actually use your service. And so, you know, that was just amazing that I had this space for yeah. me and interrupted space, someone who really was there for was holding, you know, space and that has this and and an interfered time to to look into my mind. Yeah. Perhaps what it is well. So yeah, you know, like this is so near yeah. it's very important. And I think we've got to celebrate these specific days like Mental Health Awareness Week, you know, and others. Um and just to make staff aware that we we're encouraging them to talk. So in, so important, but workplace. And I think it is fantastic, and we have something like mental health awareness week. Yeah, yeah. but it just, needs to be the stepping point with us to mm -hmm. saying this is a week where we're going to put a focus on it. Yeah. We mustn't lose that focus and then, until the next one. And um, we've got to break down the stigma. We've got to raise awareness. Mm -hmm. 
so that people don't feel that they can't come forward for support, but equally so that they recognize the signs, whether it's within themselves or noticing it amongst friends and families. Yeah. Because until we get to that point, mm-hmm. because definitely we feel at West Coast, we mind our work won't be done. I'm sure you'll be kept busy as well, I <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I would love things like <laughs> therapy to be a development thing that people could access. That's why it was my little fantasy so we can all go, we can check it out, we can get to therapy and do some work that's really positive rather than being in crisis all the time. Mm. But we're not quite there yet. Mm. But the conversations are much more open. I've been in this kind of um, work for 24 years now. Um, Well, this is already old, (laughs) but actually the conversations are much more open now. We are talking about mental health in a more positive way way there is still stigma but not in the same way we are you know there are the stereotypes the socializing and norms but it is getting better and and actually south downs leisure show that mm. because this is you know an industry that i i certainly felt that i could have accessed before mm-hmm. i really have you know and i like to think that i'm quite aware in terms of my own mental health um so so to be part of this and this is one of the reasons that we wanted to work it was because it's a well-being yeah. service. This isn't just um, exercise. The gym. Yes, it was. And the same with mind. You know, that's why our partnerships work really well because it isn't just about that. What it's about creating community that people can have these open conversations, and that we as individuals or our organisations don't need to do it. We learn we're so much stronger if we build these connections together. Definitely. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. and, and we all have different skills and we all have different interests and mm-hmm. enthusiasm and and we all and everybody needs that enthusiasm in whichever path it is that they come to so. yes yeah, so thank you ladies for a very insightful conversation i hope you found that really beneficial um and uh, thank you for your time